Hello and welcome in my next tutorial. In this tutorial I will show you how to make your sims less visible and how to make your timing less pronounced. So here we have really good example of visible sims along with the tiling of your texture. We can see the repeating pattern of the texture here. The first step usually when you want to get rid of the sims and the visible pattern here is to blend sims. So here's the texture with fixed sims. We can see that the difference between the top and the bottom of the texture here which is dark and bright on the top, is less pronounced here, along with the edges which are now blended together. I actually use this website to get uh, rid of the seams. You can do it in the Photoshop if you want, but the results are quite good and all it takes is to just input the image, click OK, and in the next page you will just download your output, which will be already fixed. And as you can see, the results are, are quite good, already better than the first texture we have here. And how we can further improve it? We can, for example, random the position of the texture and the rotation of it. In this case I actually use this texture we have on the left which have visible seams and tiling and it's for the purpose. So we have here those texture. If I drop the this texture here it's even better than this one. We have these small patches here. It looks a bit fake. This one everything seems to be more flat and coherent. Basically because we have flat image here and there's no difference between the top and the bottom edges are not as pronounced as here. This is really really useful in this case of uh, random position and rotation and there is few more extra advantages to it but before I show you those advantages I want to show you how to actually make this random position and rotation in your texture so let me copy the first texture which is this one and let me introduce to you the chaos node uh, we can draw it here and the chaos node doesn't need the projection from our texture and the transfer we need to connect here. The scale in the transfer we need to adjust manually because it will be uh, probably smaller than we had here with the box projection. I will put it to 0.3 which looks quite similar in the scale and let me cover all the options we have in the chaos. Let's start with the tile scale. It looks like we're changing the scale of the texture right but it's really not the thing. The texture scale is here and only here. The tile scale if we click at the show tile structure we'll see the scale of the tiles and the scale of the tiles it's more like a chunk taken out of your uh, texture and put into this chaos node if we go all the way down we can start seeing those textures with different position and the different position is actually coming out from the coverage here if you go to zero you can start seeing those images we have here only difference is they're blurry it's because there's blending exponent here and the blending exponent is basically blending between the textures so at the minimum the blending is quite strong here if we go all the way up to 16 there is still blending going on on the edges we can start seeing our original texture here and we, we can tell that the scale need to be smaller to be more similar to the original so let's go back to the chaos there is one more option here that is important the enable rotation if we enable the rotation we can start seeing the texture is getting rotated in different position and we can control the maximum rotation by changing the value here 360 is the maximum but we can go with 50 and have less pronounced rotation of the textures we can also change the rotation seed to have different positioning here i will keep it at zero let's try to uh, actually make this texture uh somehow useful right now it doesn't really work well with all those visible edges so let's maybe start with the tile scale let's lower this down to maybe two let's lower the blending exponent to something like this and the coverage to 0 0.5 which is default and in my opinion the best value here we can further adjust the blending and the tile scale till we get the correct result and uh, we can mess with the rotation seed till we don't see the edges once we are happy with the results we can see that we already come a long way from this repetitive texture to this more random one even though we see some edges here and there we can probably adjust the coverage to get rid of those like so now let me show you what's the advantages of the seams texture here, which is this texture. So if we mess with those settings here, we need to have like a balance between in each of those settings. If we go all the way up here, we can start seeing some patches here. If we go all the way up with the coverage, we can start seeing the edges. And there's like one setting that works in this case, 
which is the, this one. If we use the, uh, the seams texture here, which is that, this one, and mess with the settings here in the chaos node, we can start to actually have way more freedom with the changes. No matter if we use blending exponent one or all the way up at 16, there is no patches visible here. Also, we can uh, change the tile scale all the way to zero and still don't see the edges here. We can go even here all the way to really small chunks and bump up the coverage and still have quite good results. So basically we can use whole range of those settings without really caring about those edges because we get rid of the seams. So to get best benefits out of this feature here, we need to first set our texture correctly like this. And again, you can get the results on this website. Okay, now I want to show you a few creative ways to use the KS node. So here we have metallic material with few scratches connected to the roughness. If we locate this texture, we can see it's big scale with decent resolution with three individual lines visible with a lot of small details to it. Usually when you use the scratches texture, it's like 4K resolution with really small scale. So individual scratches are really, really small. And sometimes when you have close up shot of your object, Individual scratches might look a bit low resolution. So technically we can solve it this way by using big scale texture with decent resolution. So if we sell out this, we can see it's repeating itself right now. It's re not really useful right now for us, but if we disable it, connect the chaos to the roughness, we can see it's already looking better. And if we sell out the chaos, we can see it's evenly spread along the material without any seams and tiling. Another example is here. We can see texture here is already processed through chaos. We can also use the coverage to manipulate how it looks. Let's disable the cell node and let's connect it uh, directly to this texture. We can see it doesn't really look well. And if we disable it, we can see it here as well. So we can now use texture, uh, which were not useful previously. Here's next useful feature of the chaos. We can connect it to the displacement and it's really useful feature here because we can get rid of the seams visible in the displacement where they tend to be really visible. and for example, here I have huge scale with decent resolution um, image. So we have a, a lot of details of those finger appearance here. If we sell out here, we see there's no seams and tiling, which result in really good displacement map. And here, all you really need to do is set the type to vertex displacement, uh, check out the bump map, subdivide one, two times, depends on the texture and on your goals here with your material. So here we have a bit more of a saturated example of the displacement map and we can see the pattern repetition here and at the bottom. Let's sell now this. We can see the pattern uh, better and let's disable it now. Let's unplug this from the displacement and let's connect again with the chaos here. And we can see we get rid of all the seams and tiling and the texture looks way more coherent and natural. So let's sell note this now. And we can see there's no visible seams and tiling in this texture. Okay, I think that's all of the most important stuff about the Chaos Node and topics related to it. If you want another tutorial regarding the Chaos Node and creative use of it, please let me know in the comment section. Also, if you didn't understand uh, certain parts of this tutorial, also write down in the comments. Please subscribe, it will help you be up to date with my tutorials and my goal is to upload at least one tutorial a week. Uh, you can also follow me on the Instagram where usually I put the image of the next topic of my video before I upload it to YouTube. So yeah, I think that's it. See ya.